If you kill me, you'll never see another second of this coming video. Why? Because I'd be dead, and then I couldn't finish the video. Hello, I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today I feel like I owe you an apology. Progressive lenses have been around for about 25, almost 30 years now. And I got to talking with the folks over at IOT and their marketing and sales. And it turns out that there's still a whole lot of people out there that don't know a whole lot of things about progressives that I kind of assumed that you did. So today we are going to take a giant step back and do something I probably should have done a couple years ago and bring you up to speed on progressive lenses. Now, you may have noticed our intro there. And yes, progressive lenses have some good points, some bad points, and some ugly points too. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, and please make sure that every uncut lens in your optical world comes from Laramie K. Give us a try. The good, one of the good things about a progressive lens is that it almost does it all. It does have distance, it does have intermediate, it does have near, and it works pretty good for all of those things. So it kind of almost does it all. It is a really great all-around lens. If you have a rather non-demanding day, it could take you from sunup to bedtime and kind of fill in everything that you need through the course of your day. You know, it's almost down to one pair of glasses for a lot of people, certainly not everybody, but almost down to one pair of glasses. It is good for the vanity age or looks issue. Look, I'm old, I know I'm old. I wear a lined bifocal and have since I needed to. I don't care if somebody knows I'm old, but I understand that's quite important to a lot of people. And it does save face for a few years where you're not digging for the cheaters or holding your menu out like this, trying to read it. I'm gonna talk next about the bad and the ugly. And there's quite a bit of bad and quite a bit of ugly that we're going to cover. But never forget that there are quite literally billions of people wearing these things. And that as an industry and as an optician for you, there are billions of dollars that are turned in these. So, uh, you know, this, they work. People use them. They're just a fine lens. They just have some issues that you need to know about. The bad. Not terrible, not ugly, just the bad. You know, it does a whole lot of things okay. Yes, it does distance. Yes, it does intermediate. Yes, it does near. But it doesn't do any of those things perfect. It just does them pretty good. Good, sometimes even almost great, but never quite there. They require, absolutely positively must require, head and eye movement. Now, you may not think that's a really big thing. But imagine if you need to move your head to see whatever it is that you're looking at clearly and you have to hold it there for any length of time, well, that could get kind of old and you might look kind of odd. So just remember that they always require head movement. They also require a little bit of eye movement within the lens because you can't always turn your head to point your nose at what you want to look at. Sometimes there's a little moving around, which is just natural, for, especially for a little peripheral vision. And if you have even the most mild euphoria where one eye doesn't move quite in sync with the other, it can be a little bit of a problem. They're bad at any, and I mean any, long-term task. If you drive for a living, eight, nine, 10 hours a day, or sales rep or something, you're gonna want a pair of single vision distance glasses, probably suns and clears. Progressives just aren't perfect for that long-term single use focus. Me, you know, I read a couple of hours every night. Progressives aren't gonna do it. You're gonna need that second pair. Okay? So you're almost kind of down to one pair throughout your day, 
But when it's hobby time or any time you need to spend more than an hour or so with something, you're going to want a specific pair for that. The ugly, and this is really pretty ugly. A progressive lens will always have that marginal astigmatism. It will always have that blur out to the sides. Can't get around it. As ad power goes up from one to 150, to two, to 250, to three, as ad power increases distortion throughout the entire lens, not just in the ad portion, goes up. Mathematical, scientific, physics guaranteed relationship. Nothing we can do about it. As power goes up in astigmatism, or both goes up, so does distortion. Where? Across the entire lens. This is what we're going to look at a little bit closer. I'm going to show you a little bit more about how a progressive lens is set up. I'm going to race the board. I will see you back in just a minute. We're going to look at the lens in two different ways. We're going to look at it from a profile position, and then I'm going to turn the lens so it's facing you, and we'll dig into it a little bit more. The idea behind a progressive lens. And I, I want to take a sidestep here and say, like so many things in life, until you're experiencing it for yourself, you can't imagine what it's like. So for all you youngins out there, everybody who's under 40 or so, this is a little hard to grasp. Uh, but do your best to try so that you can sell progressives because you make a whole lot of money with them. And of course, most people need them. The lens itself for distance could be any power. It could be minus, it could be plus, it could be astigmatism, it could be a cylinder, any powers at all that a distance lens power would be written for. The idea behind the lens, level-headed, looking out through the distance lens power, off into the distance, infinity, anything out past 20 feet, you can see clearly as you would with a single vision pair of distance glasses. You can see the tree, you can see across the canyon, you can see the street sign down the road. If I move my head, hence through the lens, I change position and I grow, go down into this intermediate, what they call corridor, I move the object itself or I move my body a little bit, I will have a focus for things that are in my intermediate distance length. That would be anything from 20 feet to my nearest possible accommodation point. And that's going to depend on the person, the ad power, and the ad power. For intermediate, we generally think of computer distance. There's my laptop. There, oh, you might be watching me on YouTube. There I am. It's my intermediate zone. That is a range of focus. Now, because you are an optician, you also, of course, need to work on those little tiny things. So in addition, you have your near full power. That's your distance power combined with your full add power, whatever that might be, 1, 125, 150, 175. And you can see the head of your screwdriver to put it in that little tiny slot on that little tiny screw on a pair of eyeglasses. So the concept of a progressive lens, distance, a building of power and intermediate to the full near, which includes your full add power. Next, I'm going to turn this lens. So we're going to look at it straight on and talk a little bit about that corridor that I just mentioned. Progressive lenses, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The hard versus soft designs, hard versus soft, is crazy super dated, uh, but you still see it popping up on social media. You still people asking the question, what is the difference between the two? And you still see it on tests. So let's talk about that for just a second. I went out and I asked some other folks. We worked it out. We, so this is kind of vetted, and this is what we came up with. A hard design. The corridor and the areas of the usable lens can be slightly wider and enlarged. Okay, so your black lines here, that would be a hard design. But the transition from clear to the marginal astigmatism, the optical swamp and the land of optical garbage, the distortion in the peripheral area is abrupt and harsh. Once your eye wanders from this clear zone, 
into these areas, it's, it's a very clear place, it's like a slap in the face. It was very disorienting for people to wear. A soft design. The corridor and the areas of the usable lens may be slightly narrower or restricted. The blue lines. A little bit narrower, a little less room to work. But the transition from clear to the marginal astigmatism in the outside edges, distortion in the peripheral area, is much smoother and hence it is easier to wear. Now, there used to be two very distinct designs. That's not the case anymore. All modern designs, all freeform, are a combination of the two. But that is where hard design and soft design comes from. Inherent in progressive design is that the distance is, and I put always in brackets because who knows, somebody maybe turned a freeform upside down once or something, um, is always the largest area just represented here. This is a big, large viewing area. You have some good peripheral um, vision. You can look up and around. This is fairly all clear. It's a good size area. Intermediate always narrows. Slight widening down towards your near. You will hear Progressives, also called progressive edition lenses, or PALs, you still see that in magazines, you'll still see that stuff online. Where does it come from? It's the concept that it is a progression of power. You have your distance, intermediate, and near. If you look at that drawing, that's the concept for a progressive lens. If I have a distance power of plus 2OU and an add of a plus 150, the corridor, or the area between the distance and full add, or the near, will build or progress in power smoothly, not in actual steps. Way too much to get into here today, but the idea that this is smooth, that this builds without perfect diopter steps, that's actually where this stuff comes from. What I'd really like to get across today is the, the difference in the rate of change in progressive lens design. That's kind of the concept behind this entire video presentation. And this would be my own interpretation as a graph. Uh, we started off about 25, 30 years ago. It, technology built, changes were created. We, we had you know the Verilux Comfort introduced somewhere in here. Great lens, probably took the market for a good 10 years as clearly the best there was. Then we came along with Freeform, everybody else caught up, and now we're still developing, we still have research and development stuff, we have changes, but those changes are not quite as dramatic, they aren't quite the leaps and bounds in the technology and differences that they once were. And yes, we are probably tapering back off to about as good as we're gonna get. Now, if we don't have super crazy leaps and bounds, we have this slow changes in development. Why do these tweaks matter? Why does this little, these little tiny subtle changes, why do they matter? Why does quality matter? Why do you want folks like IoT designing the lenses in a lab like Laramie K making them? Well, I would say it's because your job is tough enough already. As we age, let's see, let's say, that you've seen a customer when they were 50, 55, and 60. When they first came to you at 50, they had a nice low 150 add, distance of a minus 250 with a little tiny sill or something. And they were in you know, pretty good health. They were active and happy and life was good and they were still had kids at home. And then you saw them at 55 and their add power went up a little tiny bit. They're getting older, they're getting slower, things aren't working quite so well. Their distance didn't change at all. Put them in the exact same lens and their vision's just not quite as good. Five years goes by, you see them again when they're 60, 65, whatever it might be. Their ad power is now up to a two, a 250. The rest of their body's falling apart, things don't work like they used to. Nothing does and their ad power went up Distance power stayed the same. They put on the pair of glasses. Nothing else in life works too good, and now neither do their glasses. Why? Because as power goes up, say it with me, so does distortion throughout the lens. So your job is tough enough already. It's these little tiny tweaks. It's the quality that matters. It's the lens design that matters. It means choosing the best lens for your individual customer. It's gonna keep them happy as you work through with them through the years. 
Uh, progressive markings, marking up a lens in order to do verification, layout, or finishing work, how to finish them, and choosing the proper freeform lens design for your customer, which is an awesome video I did with Janet a few months ago. That stuff is all on the YouTube channel and or on the website opticianworks.com. Okay, I think we are through with this. I talked about all these things that are wrong, the good, the bad, the ugly, and next time we are going to talk about office-specific progressive lenses, which actually overcome a lot of the bad and the ugly. I will see you again next week. We're going to look at this lens in two different ways. First, we're going to look at it as a profile, and then we're going to look on it, <laughs> look on it, 